Hey, it's no problem, Ebony. How is the missus, by the way? Isn't she like about three ish months along? Three, four? Unless I'm bad at counting? She's great. <clears throat> You're going somewhere in about 25 minutes. You won't be here long. That's okay, fam. Alright. Let's get in the game. That's loud. Good discretion Sir, is advised. So, by the way, let let me start this off by saying, I love Gundam. I am a big Gundam fan. Whenever I see some bullshit happening, the first source that I will usually go to to fact check what I find and see is gonna be Gundam. Everything that he says here, there are some things I do and I don't agree with. And I'll get into it when I get to them. But, for the most part... Take everything I say with a grain of salt, because, again, I have a personal vestible, I have a personal vested interest in this, and I know for a fact someone's gonna try and take my shit out of context and gonna try and paint me in the worst light, because that's what people do on the internet. But viewer discretion advised. Just, just putting that out there. All right, let's go. Be five full fun. This might just be a funny one. Someone sent me a link to Udemy. You don't know what Udemy is. I kind of have a brief understanding of it. I guess it's like a teaching class of some sort. Someone sent me Ninja's Udemy. Should have bought it. It was $9. He's going to teach you how to get good at games and become successful and quit. <laughs> Frankly, Ninja himself would not be where he is if it wasn't for Fortnite popping off and him becoming one of the first good players quickly. All right. Now, like, Ninja's a. Okay, now that's not exactly fair. Yeah, 100%. We know we should know better than anyone that I don't just sit here bitching about anything and everything and nothing without good reason or without a point. Like for example, uh, Tyler, uh, Ninja, he he his his success wasn't overnight because a lot of people when they when they talk about household name streamers that people recognize, people like Doctor Disrespect, Devin Nash, Asmongold, uh, Legendary Lee, uh, Dom. Uh, Jeff Henla, whole bunch of people in different communities and different games that have either been there on the stream, that have been there streaming for like forever from the beginning, or they joined the platform later on after Justin TV became Twitch, and then before or after the Twitch buyout in 2014. Ninja has always existed on the platforms. He, he has always existed in some form playing video games, because he was originally a Halo guy, and then he switched over to Call of Duty, like a lot of people did. Like, back when Allier was not just a Fortnite streamer, or a Fortnite YouTuber, rather. He started out doing that, and then he switched over to, like, to Fortnite. He was one of the first people to get in, because that's an advantage of streaming. Early adopter. He got in, he was one of the first people to immediately blow up. That's not how you snap. Blow up. There we go. I can't snap with my left hand. He blew up. He got popular because of Fortnite and because of his personality. He made himself the guy. Because that's something that a lot of streams do. That's something that a lot of streamers do. Small streamers, big streamers, medium streamers, speedrunners, all of us. A lot of people, they usually go to a person specifically not just for the personality but for content. So if I was, and, I, and it's going to come up because this is going to be mentioned in the video later... I've watched some of it, but not all of it. Most people will go to a channel because, oh, this person is in this category, and they watch X streamer. So they're going to look at the stream, and when that stream's off, they're going to look at someone else who's in the category. So you could go from Ninja to Courage to Tim the Tatman, maybe even Dr. Disrespect, and you'll never have to leave the browser tab because the way that people view Twitch is they'll automatically have it on streams from high to low. They'll look at the top names, and they'll be like, ooh, who has the highest numbers? And for the most part, that's Ninja, because Ninja markets himself well. 
It's not only because of it. There's years of groundwork that nobody sees. And that's a thing for a lot of streams, both male and female. It's not a gender thing. But it's also not a specific success thing. It just so happens to be because he made the right moves to do so. The last thing you think of a good Fortnite player, because technically he can't even place in tournaments. But whatever, you know, he's got some little merch for kids. There's my point exactly. <laughs> but apparently, Udemy doesn't only just do that. There are also courses for coding, if you will, art, and so on and so forth. There are many things probably on Udemy that's worth paying for and learning or picking up the skill. Today's Udemy was sent to me by Tomas, I believe. He sent me... Hi. This is edited. I actually took like five minutes to process what I was looking at. Let me watch that again. My... My, my theater skills are kicking in. Because I know he edited that so that the opacity was covering it, but... Sit me. Hi. Why... Why? There are so many things happening in this image right now. I want to break them down for you slowly. One of the smaller things people don't know about my work experience is that I am a uh, social media manager and content producer. And I have an eye for this shit, right? So, first thing I notice immediately, Twitch marketing. How learn how to stand out on Twitch. Zombie Unicorn on what streamers and content creators can do to amplify their presence online and build a community. First off, if you were gonna be making a video series, and this isn't like anything explicitly fucked up or explicit to the point. Number one. Why the fuck did they get put that title on it? Twitch marketing learn how to stand out on Twitch? Are you serious? I'm not going to rant right now. It's getting there, but... First, it, it's obviously Sage. They obviously had her in good lighting, which, that's fine. The title of it betrays what she's gonna say and i only know that because i've watched part of this ahead but first impressions when i first saw it was why do you have that title with this streamer for this project class that's number one number two and number three why did you dress her in this some people are gonna look into that and be like what you mean carl but like how to stand out on Twitch. Right there. I could put that image right there. I could tweet that out right now. Class over. How do you how do you stand out on Twitch? Do some shit that makes people talk about you. This is edited. I mean, it, I understand if it's like, hey guys, learn to take a class. Look at the person who's gonna be teaching it. it, it it's kinda like a hot for teacher thing, right? It's like, hey boys, you wanna learn how to do this? Here, listen to my project. That it's, it's it's some clever marketing, ingenious even. I but at the same time, like, like come on now. Process what I was looking at. I see what you're doing. Zombie unicorn has. I got problem. eyes. Twitch marketing. Learn how to stand out on Twitch. Bam! I stole that from Ziltex. Uh, zombie unicorn. On what streamers and content creators can do to amplify their presence online and build a community. People have come to me numerous times. They said, Papa Gundam, how do I get successful on YouTube and Twitch? And I always said to them, be a woman and be remotely attractive and remotely interesting. That was literally my point. Hell, you don't have to be fully cognizant of any languages. People will just throw money at you, whatever. This will teach you what it takes to develop your personal brand. All right, so the classes of what this is supposed to teach you to learn. Develop your personal brand. Industry collaborations. Keeping your content 
Fresh. Workload and stress management. Improve stream production quality. How to stand out and staying relevant in a growing tech uh, slash dying market. All of these things are important for a streamer to have. However, this is th this is code word. All of it is code word for here is the shit you need to learn to avoid. Industry collaborations, keeping your content fresh, workloads and stress management. That's probably one I need to check out. I'm pretty stressed. Improve stream production quality. How to stand out. Staying relevant in a growing market. If these are all the things Zombie Unicorner is going to teach you, mm, you're not going to get very far. And I'm not trying to be an asshole, but let's be real here. Zombie Unicorn is not burning up the world. Develop your personal brand. If it's Zombie Unicorn, it'd be victimhood. Exactly. What you're about to see is pure, unadulterated harassment. This Asian man here is called Plain Rock. Don't let his meek look fool you. This man is a misogynist. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even do it. We're about to go into a bully hunter panel. Whoa, so many people. Otherwise known as grifting people to sell Steel Series headphones. On uh, to sponsor money. What a fake event. Where no real harassment happened. Zombie, can you say now this is what it's all about? <laughs> Aw. Now that now this is what it's all about. <laughs> What's about to happen, everybody, is pure, unadulterated. Harassment. Feel better, okay? All right, thank you very much. No, it's not really nice to just harass people. First thing I'm going to note, because this is going to be important. Referring to this, what Zombie just did is what she tried to do to me, right? He literally says a meme, right? You know, just playful, just ribbing because of a catastrophic failure of marketing. You know, that thing that she's being hired for $100 to teach you how to do. Not just fabricating something that was bu bullshit that was made up for attention, but fabricating bullshit that was made up for attention and trying to sell you something while doing so. To, it, to stand in consolidation with bad behavior on the internet given an opportunity for humility and how one deals with stress she bends in the situation and chooses to try to get hostile and petty because that's what she does like it's not really nice haha she would have looked better if she just ignored him or just shit talked back instead she does a mommy scold exactly like, where is the video? I have to make another thread or another tab. Hold on. As I tweeted the desk the other day, should be up here in media, probably. It's not just in tweets and replies. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it. There you go. So, Shapirka, here's how you handle this situation correctly. Can I knock you up, you whore? Of course. I would love your dick. Can I put my tongue in your bum? Yes. So, okay, let me write this down, y'all. When are you free? Jordan, <laughs> who wants to put a tongue in my bum. Uh, you free whenever? Okay, let's do it Friday, 4 p.m. Does that sound good? I'll pick you up. Cool. And then we have your boy DJ. 
who wants to make a baby with me i'm gonna write down baby making yeah cool are you free tomorrow i would like to get it all done by the end of the week if that's possible i'll pick you up boys or we could do it all together and then i'll save some time can i right there that entire interaction and she actually wrote the shit down too that interaction male female envy fucking attack helicopter pet rock whatever the fuck that's how you do it baby when someone gives you shit you don't become a cry bitch you, you don't run you don't hide you don't act like a little bitch. You don't whine. You don't say, oh, why was me? How could I have been harassed? I, I've been offended. I am offended. You, you, have, you have wronged me. I demand to have retribution. You don't do that, right? When someone gives you shit, either be funny and give them shit back or challenge them. And make some shit happen. This is gonna come up later because I'm gonna mention this. I wanna wanna try and get through it because I wanna get Ma's opinion on this. Because he ain't got a lot of time. When when you have any situation happen, you should be able to diffuse and handle the situation in a way that shows who you are. Like right now, me, I'm a voice actor. I'm a screenwriter. I am a stage guy. <laughs> uh oh, my opinion. I feel a little pressure. <laughs> putting, putting you on the spot. I Means you can't go anywhere, mister. <laughs> but me. I'm I'm a theater guy, right? I grew up regrettably against my will for the most part. In entertainment. When someone shit talks me. What you just witnessed was what I do. I riff. I riff and I riff. Because that's what I do. That's, that's who I am. But I'm, I'm, I'm nasty in my nature. I, can, I can't help it. It runs in my family. All the women in my family have mouths. So when you grow up in a household full of women and they have mouths, you got to learn how to have a mouth right then. Regret in theater. No, um... Show choir into theater, into proper theater training and acting. It, it's it's a whole story. I think I told the story in one of my videos before, but the long and short of it was is that uh, private school led into like the weirdest kind of interactions here, there, blase, blase. Long story short, I'm someone who's got a lot of energy, but I try to hold it back because sometimes it can be too much. But getting back on my point. Anytime you have conflict, anytime you have any interaction with a content producer, your interaction with them should never be based in trying to act like a victim. Because all of social media, any interaction, anything that is in film, anything that is recorded, it is a stage. And you are on the spot always. Some people buck under that pressure. Some people don't buck under that pressure. Some people know how to handle themselves in the moment, and they can only really think of the funniest things to shit to say after the drama's finished, you know? But for the most part, anything, your reaction is going to be the thing that people remember. The first thing you say is what people will know you for, because it's going to be the first thing they go to. Uh, for example, I'm pretty sure if, if this comes up and it blows up, the first thing people are going to say is, who the f Like, there's going to be the first thing that they said the first time this should happen to me, which was, who the fuck is that guy? Because they didn't know who I was. Cast and crew. Cast and crew. Cast first and then eventually crew. But, um... The first thing that they did when she tried and came at me with her bullshit was I said, I was very respectful and said, no, here's what I know, here's what I can prove, and if you don't like what I'm saying, here's all of these other girls and guys who said the exact same thing I did. Her entire reaction from that at the end of it all, where she chose to say, nah, nah, you just personally hate me. Because the way that she feels about situations like this is that she interacts with someone 
and she will immediately assume of them the reason why they're doing something. Because me, I like to focus on people's behavior and character on my channel. That's what most of my videos recently have been about. She will look at you, and she will assume the worst of you. Because she will look at the situation as if she was looking for the reason why you're doing it. The same thing that happened to Plain Rock was the same thing that happened to me. When I said what I said to her, which was, hey, I don't like the fact that your behavior is making a bad light on the platform. What did she take from that? This. Hey guys, it's not cute to be upset at women on Twitch for literally just having boobs all because of your own stream actually just sucks. Boobs don't sustain viewers, personalities does. And if you can't compete with a pair of boobs, what does that say about your personality? I laughed when I saw that. Hard. I laughed really fucking hard. Oh yes, she is a Karen. One could even say, if given the right circumstances, that she's Meredith. But she is a Karen. And she originally erased this tweet. Because I exposed her on this when she said it and then she reposted it again because she decided oh well i've already blocked him nobody will see what he personally says so i can just shit talk him and nobody will know i can lie and nobody will ever know she tried it it didn't work out for her long story short but you cannot in under any circumstance ever behave like this because it will never end well for you. Like, you can say, you could be as much of a sarcastic fuck as you want. But you cannot. You cannot do this. You cannot erase the evidence that you did it. And then repost it to the internet and say, Hey guys, hey guys, it's not cute. And you come after me because you're mad. Because you don't have what I have. You cannot do that. You can't get people thrown out of the vents. You got about five minutes left? Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll move on, because I'm, I'm holding on this. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Secured told me to follow them. I got kicked out the press conference. <laughs> I got kicked out of the press conference. During the panel, she was asked a question like, what do you do if you mess up? She was just like, oh, you laugh it off, you make a meme out of it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's not what she did. That's my point. Industry collaborations only with people who kiss your ass or share your ideals and beliefs. Keeping your content fresh. When the views get low, the body paint comes out. Workload and stress management. Pick on an Asian dude <laughs> at like a video summit, get him kicked out, then say that he was a plant to try and make people turn against you. Improve stream production quality. I I'll tell you how she does it. Get yourself a nice DSLR camera and then go to um, Elgato. They have this interface that can connect to your DSLR camera. This is how all the big streamers do it. And your DSLR camera will become your webcam. That's how they get all that really crisp, beautiful footage that you can't find at a store. There you go, I just gave it to you for free. I saved you $9.99. But if you don't buy it in the next two days, it will go back to $100. It's a one hour course, video on demand, by the way. Uh, how to stand out. I really don't know how Zombie does it. Like nobody remembers Zombie Unicorn until she starts some drama or does something backwards. So I guess, I don't know, try and start up Bully Hunters too. He's more or less covering everything that I was gonna cover. So I might not need all of these links that I have, but yeah. Staying relevant in a growing market. I'm going to leave that one alone because you already know how that went. This requires you that you should have knowledge of Twitch and live streaming platforms. <laughs> if you're already aware of Twitch, you already know how hard it is to get anywhere on that platform unless you're a woman that's willing to sexually objectify herself. Yeah, I'm back, bitch. Whoop, whoop. That's it. If you are a pro player, and even that isn't enough, I get more views than dudes who are on pro CSGO teams. Like, for real, it's not enough if you're a guy. It requires a computer, but it doesn't tell you what what type of the requirement is computer. I think that the mother would have a computer if they're on Udemy, a Twitch account. All right, that one's at least doable. You want to start or are currently streaming on Twitch or other live streaming platforms. These are your requirements. Descriptions. 
Zombie Unicorn, Natalie, is a 30-year-old Cuban-American professional gamer known as Zombie Unicorn online. She is partner content creator on Twitch. It's not hard to get when you're a woman that does body painting. That's, you know that's true. Uh, and YouTube going on five years, who strives to be a positive role model for women in the gaming space. She wrote this herself. Not only that, mm. she also voice acts for various animations, commercials, and indie games. I've never heard about her voice acting. Now, I looked into her IMDb. She has done some bit parts of this here and there. Small things. But, for the most part, she is not a voice actor. She is not a voice actress. She is nowhere near doing what someone like Elspeth Eastman does. And I know that for a fact. Because myself being a voice actor, I know. Just from her demeanor, I know that she doesn't do this shit. Because, you know... It's not uncommon to hear people lying on their CVs. Probably everybody in the industry has done it at one point or another. But this is just blatant. Like, 30-year-old Cuban-American professional gamer. Her literal fucking description on IMDB is woman who projects herself as Terra Bad Gamer. Matter of fact, let me look it up right now, because it probably still hasn't changed. right there. Natalie Casanova, veteran streamer for over five years, partner for over three, unique personality and style, made her a leader and a translator in the industry, most recently with her guides as a DSLR for a webcam, and a self proclaimed literal trash at video games and encourage her trash squad community to always blah blah blah. And the only things that she has up here as credit, specifically in filmography, is kicking and screaming, the attack, and hot pepper game reviews. Those are the only credits that she has. Specifically, that. That's it. That's it. Outside of what she was attempting to do with, uh, with, uh, with Bully Hunters, that's all she has. She has no official credits past that. Mind you, that's not even boasting myself as though I'm any better. Because I'm at the point in my life where I'll have to explain to people the things that I've done. And when they ask me, why did you take that job? My reply every time has been, I was young and I needed the money. But, that's what we do when we went. Anything, but it could be true. I mean, hell, I voice, voice acted in games. You don't see me going, I'm a professional. Is she really Cuban? I'm not going to comment and say that she's not, but I will say that she has, she, she looks the part. If you were to tick off the box on the demographic, you could say, yeah, I could see it. If I was a casting agent, it would be the thing. You gotta head out. Any final things you need? Uh, not that I know of right now. You'll probably come back and you'll watch it later and you'll probably be able to cut some pieces out of this. Because I'm gonna probably have Charza look over it and do the same thing too. Because this stream's about to be a gold mine. Like, I intend on going full in on this shit. But, um, no, nah, I'll let you know. You go out and you have a good time with your, uh, with your wife, okay? No voice actor. Dude, I have voice acting stuff all the time. I have so many emails from companies that are dying. Yeah, that's no problem, dude. Don't worry about it. I can't even keep up anymore. And I'm still not sitting here jerking myself off into the sunset. Oh, I'm a voice actor. Oh, oh. oh, another thing that I'm noticing in this description. And more recently, Natalie was the inaugural winner of Fox's survival reality show, Kicking and Screaming, which makes her the first full-time Twitch partner on any major U.S. TV network during primetime. Fuck out of here. Who watched it? Who cares? Like, who? How would that be important? It's not like it's Big Brother. Small channel. It's a small stuff. It was a small show. It happened. And nobody remembers. And it's from 2017, of all things. 2017 in internet years is... Like, a hundred years. I actually did the jerking off motion, which is probably shows you the type of person I am. A, 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 a piteous wretch. And more recently, Natalie was the inaugural winner of Fox's survival reality show, Kicking and Screaming? What was that? I didn't even know that existed. 
which makes her the first full-time Twitch partner on a major US TV network during prime time. Wow, it was so amazing for a career, none of us heard about it. Congratulations, I guess. It shows you how bad Fox's television shows have gotten, am I right? Ten divas trading their hairspray. Please lock the champagne. Or, or bug spray. Shut the <laughs> okay, so basically this is a show that has a whole... It's basically Survivor. No, no, it's exactly Survivor. It's Celebrity Survivor. It's Celebrity Survivor with, I think it was, females that were models and cheerleaders and dancers in the industry or people of, you know, regular notable clout on the internet. And then you, they put people who were like male professionals in their own industry together with them. And they tried to win as a partner team. I remember seeing one episode of it, and I never watched it. A whole bunch of women who are social media chicks that you don't really know. Somebody in, a, I'm like controlling my cursing. Some asshat producer was sitting there like, what if we did another survival reality TV show? The market isn't already flooded, because that's how they talk in fucking West Hollywood. <laughs> that, he is right. Yeah, that is how they talk. Like, what if we take all these women that are popular streamers and then put them up? And you know Zombie Unicorn was not their first choice. They probably went to like Pokimane or something. You know it. Was Pokimane blowing up in 2017? I actually don't know about that one. Because I only recently know that Pokimane got big this year because of a whole bunch of other shit. I don't think she's been there on the streams like for the longest time i remember her name getting mentioned by people like dom back in 2018 but that's about it I'm model. It'd be nice. this chick's a model an nba cheerleader do they really not have anybody like for real this is pathetic we have a baywatch star paired with a, a baywatch ninja. star baywatch hasn't been on television in like 30 years baywatch Whoa, Baywatch was on in 1989? Whoa, dude! That is a long time ago. That is like... Dude, there are people who were born in 1989 and they're now 30. I'm a gamer, online personality host... Yeah, I think so too. You gotta love how Zombie Unicorn Spot was so small. You honestly don't know, understand how she got this far in the industry from the obvious? Oh, don't worry. The video will explain how she got this far. I can't believe I watched this. You're gonna, you're gonna flip a gasket when I explain it to you. Because I know about this explicitly because of the reason it comes up. might as well been Oh my God, Jesus, that's like being Al Bundy from Married with Children. I once scored four touchdowns in a single game in high school. About the course. An exploration of the holistic challenges facing streamers and content creators in a growingly competitive and saturated market. Let's dive into what makes you... An exploration in the holistic? Holistic's not the word that you use in that sentence. Oh god, who wrote this? Was this written by a corporate monkey? An exploration of the holistic challenges. To, no, take out holistic. An exploration of the challenges facing streamers and content creators and a growingly, growingly, growing, in a growing competitive and saturated market. Let's dive. Let's dive. Let's dive into what makes you the great. Okay, that's a different, different kind of sentence structure. Let's dive into what makes you the great content creator you are today by deconstructing your methodology. What can the new streamers of today do to stand out and grow? What advice do you have for the female community? So, content that's directed towards female streamers and not all streamers, obviously not going to be useful to like 49.5% of the populace basically horrible i i don't know who wrote this i feel like this was machine created like this was a copy pasta that they had that they put on all of it and then they just edited a little bit here and or there i have a sneaking suspicion that she probably wrote all of it herself i don't know how they do things on the website but the way that this is structured this is structured by a person that is looking at the wrong metrics it's like not the greatest way to write a sentence or to write a feature blurb, it's not eye-popping. It doesn't attract my attention to the bullet points. And once you go down the bullet points and you get to the point where it's what advice do you have for the female community, my brain's completely zoned the fuck out. Which is a running theme, but... The great content creator you are today.
by deconstructing your methodology. What can the new streamers of today do to stand out and grow? What advice do you have for the female community? Who is this course for? Anyone who is a Twitch streamer, but twice in this whole thing, we've seen that it's kind of geared towards women. Uh, anyone who wants to make streaming their full-time job. Dude, I would not recommend making streaming your full-time job unless you got lucky. You know, like for real. And especially unless you're a woman and you're cute. Like, let's face it, Twitch is biased, dude. Specifically, 100%. cute little skinny white girls. If you black- I wouldn't, I, I don't, I disagree there. Twitch is just biased specifically to women. They're biased to specific kinds of girls that will exploit themselves, no matter what. And that's, that's Nicole Slaw, that's Cage Citron, that's Amanda Armorant, that's St. Peach, that's uh, that one other. It's it's there's this an Asian streamer. I don't I don't know what her name is right now. It's not. It's, I'm blanking on it. But there's like a famous video that. Gundam's done on her where he talks about her for like a bit But um those girls uh, Casey Tron Cole Slaw, legendary Lee. There's another one whose name I'm forgetting but Alinity Helena live Pokemane even cuz Pokemane's guilty of this shit She's much she's much much less off on it But she is Definitely using those same tactics, along with all the countless other ones that you couldn't be able to name. You could basically, you could basically say the entire just chatting section, if you really wanted to be honest. But you have a specific subset of streamers on the platform, predominantly female, some male, who abuse the clout-seeking methods. They bring attention to themselves to create drama. And then from that drama, they create drama that centers on itself, that keeps a person in a feedback loop, right? So, relevant to Natalie, a good example, is just looking at my, uh, my thread on it, because I wrote a moment to document it when it happened. Be a content creator that creates content that is considered edgy because it is something that brings attention to yourself person makes a statement you come and try to defend yourself and say no I'm not guilty of this I don't ever do that why are people attacking me for this I'm just trying to exist prove your point to their face overtly Make it very painfully clear that they are wrong and that they are lying through their teeth because they don't want to be honest. Prove the point about when they say, oh, no, you're going out of your way to create drama because you just want to put attention on me because you hate me. Point out, no, no, this is my point because this stuff comes up no matter what. Because I know that it has to, because even when I prove my point, and I explicitly take away this thing, careful, my, uh, my, 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 my chatbot is very, very strict by nature. Um, give me a second to fix it, because now I lost my train of thought. Um, prove a point. Yeah, why am I still getting hate? Mm -hmm. You prove a point. And they say, because in her message here, if I can find it, because I know I archived it. It's archived on here somewhere. It should be, at least. Did I archive it later, or did I archive it there? Where did I put it? I can't find it. My lord. Side there. And then go down. And then go down.
guess we'll just have to look it up manually. It's all right. I want to at least make sure it's in the VOD because it's gonna be, it's gonna come up later. It's gonna be a person who's gonna be out there because it always happens. So I'm gonna make sure it's there. Right. So you have a person who makes a wrong statement about something. Specifically, you going out of your way to look for something. And I prove my point by being able to not only show no, not only are you wrong, but you don't know how the tech works, and also eat crow. You do that, they do this, it happens, and then they turn around and say, oh, woe is me. Oh, woe is, is me. How dare they? How, how can I survive when I am subject to such harassment while doing shit like this? The attention comes to them, and then they glide off of it, right? They surf on the wave, because even though it's negative attention, it's attention. This happens a lot, because that's just how Twitch is. The majority of Twitch drama is expanded into social media because it either happens on a stream, then gets reported to a website like Livestream Fails, and then goes onto Reddit, goes onto places like uh, Reset Era, goes onto places like Pretty Ugly Little Liars. Sometimes even ends up on a website like Kiwi Farms. But it happens. It then gets circulated into a cycle of hatred because people pick up the story. They look at the news. If they're biased to be on their side, they're going to join their side and take their arguments regardless of whatever facts you have to prove against it. People who will be abstained from it will be like, well, it, it is what it is. They'll move on with their lives, especially if it's something that's like, oh, well, this happens to us every other day. Why the fuck would I care? But people create a cycle and it creates a feedback shoot a uh, feedback loop in an echo chamber where people bring it up and it brings up attention and gets them more popularity, brings up attention, more popularity, round and around and around you go. That group of people is what makes a site like Twitch bad. I think you said, you just mentioned that uh, the website is basically now is like a full-on cam site. Yeah, that's what Twitch has basically become now. You have three types of Twitch. You have the streamers who are known... You have the streamers that are unknown, and then you have those streamers. Those people over there. Because it's an Overton window problem. You have streamers that will become relevant in a conversation about a topic because of something that they did. And it'll get mentioned. It'll get referenced. For Natalie's example, nobody knew really who or what she was, what she was doing, because she was over there right? She wasn't, she's not a Fortnite streamer. She's not one of those well-known streamers where people are looking at everything she does. She's not a Trainwreck TV. She's not a Devin Nash. She's not an Asmongold. She's not a Ninja. She's not a Courage. She's not a Richard Lewis, the journalist. She's not a Rod Slasher Breslau, who's also a content producer and is, I wouldn't say he's a streamer per se, but he's a, per, he's a journalist too. He's not one of those people. He's not somebody who shows up regularly as a regular occurring person on a podcast, right? She's not one of those streamers. She's not in the content streams for video games at being at the top echelons and ranks. And that's going to come up later in the video too. So I'll touch that when I get to it. So she's one of, you know, those streamers over there. It's not a negative category to be in. You know, it's just like, hey... I, I'm looking up Fortnite stuff, and I'm like, all right, so there's Tim, Tim's on, Lupo's on, and Summit's on, Soda Poppin's on, uh, Train Rex is on, Tyler One's doing some content and stuff, Tyler over on Mixer's doing stuff, who, who, who else is on? Oh, look, it's King Richard. Oh, look, it's Soltech. You know? They're, they're, you could say it's like S-Class, A-List, B-List, C-List, all the way down to Z-List streamers. Or you could say the Z-list is like relatively unknown people or some other streamers like myself. It's not like it's a bad thing. It's like you've got your S-class, you got your, your well-knowns, and then you got the people who are heavy, grinding, moving hard every day, making content. Like, you, they, you don't know their names yet, 
But if you were to sit down and watch him, you're like, you know what? I like this guy. I like this girl. They make stuff. Let me follow. You know, when you're in your favorite and your popular streamer's not on, you go to their channel and you're like, you know what? I'm gonna watch some I'm gonna watch some content from King Richard. I wanna see what King Richard has to say. Cause that's that's what they're like. That's what you do. It's not a bad thing to be in that category. But the way that they usually bring attention to themselves is that like back in the day, when Casey Tron first was streaming, she would stream League of Legends every day, all day. And she would stream for like periods of time on end. Giant fucking webcam superseded over like 20% of the screen while in the matchmaking. And then in the game, it's like 30%, 70 cent game. Playing Cassiopeia, building bad items, ranting at her chat of the people who are criticizing her because they see what she's doing. That was the majority of what it is. That's the majority of what happens with Natalie and with girls and with guys like this. Because, like, they can always say, oh, but I'm being victimized. I, uh, uh, I, I'm being isolated. I'm being attacked because they just hate me. No. No, no, no. No. There's probably a lot of them that do. Personally, before any of this shit happened, I didn't care one way or another about her. Wasn't on my radar. I wouldn't care. I'm sure she has a lot of great qualities. But in my interactions, none of those qualities came the fuck out. None of it. Not one. Nair nada. She didn't follow not one piece of her own advice. So. Long story short. Get to the point. That's how that cycle goes. That's what that kind of content production creates. That's how those people exist. That's their, that's their mental space. Get into the brain. Really understand the complex nature of the beast. Get back. If you're Latin, it might not happen. If you're chubby, no money wubby. You know, let's be real here. There's only a select group of women, and they all spit a certain archetype that continuously <laughs> up on the platform and never get indefinitely suspended. True. Who builds a community on Twitch, anyone who's looking to grow. If anybody, if you, if anybody who watches it really wants to look into it, look up Pay Money Wubby's video. Look up Twitch and its abuses of power. Look up Critical's video over Twitch has a moderator problem. Look up those two videos. Watch them. It will, you, if you don't understand, if you don't know, that will explain to you perfectly what the problem is. Long story short, you got people being given secondhand fucking favors. You got people who are explaining on camera, like with Ethan and Gila Klein of H3H3. They are being given advantages for being big. Don't, don't necessarily even have to do anything. You know? You don't even have to ask for it. They're just being given it because Twitch knows that the thing that keeps users on the site is not the site itself existing. It's the streamers and the content they produce. They protect the people who create that content that gets the clicks. If you don't know the demographic of the site, it's mainly kids. Mainly boys. Because it's a gaming website. Not saying there ain't a couple of lesbians or some gays in there, but mainly boys on the site. They go to gaming. They go to the gaming tab. Who are they going to look up? They're going to look up their favorite streamers. If their favorite streamer is not on, they're going to watch VODs of his stream. But let's be serious. If they're a regular viewer, they're they're always turning in. They're always watching that stream from beginning to end if they got time. If they're not, they're going to the, they're going to the stream and watch what they can. They come back, they watch the VOD that they missed. They click through the VODs, you know, looking for the ones that they could be all be able to, to watch that are sub, that aren't subscriber uh, paywalled because you know that's a thing that's going that's happening with uh, Twitch users. The meta of making your vods uh, subscriber only so that you can't get um, demonetized by bots that just go through your vods and just copy strike you for everything that they see. But like, you you go through it. And you look at the demographics, and you look at the things that are popular, and you look at what sections... Well, actually, we can do it right now. We can do it right now. We'll do a live. You can look at the sections that are popular on Twitch. You can look at the browse section. 
not sorted by, say, category of what's popular, but look at the category of what is filtered by low to high. What do you normally see that is here in this section when you look at it? League of Legends, Fortnite, Just Chatting, GDA, COD, Dota, Hearthstone, Counter-Strike, Sekiro, World of Warcraft, Warframe, Tartov, Teamfight Tactics, Intruder, Apex Legends, and uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield. What do we derive from this, just from the first few rows? Popular game, worldwide known. Popular game, worldwide known. Personality streamers, popular game, worldwide known. Shooter, shooter. MOBA, card game, worldwide known. Shooter, worldwide known. Worldwide known game, that's popular because it's hard. Worldwide known MMORPG. Worldwide known ARPG. Simulation FPS. Worldwide known game that's tied to the first game that normally dominates the position. Single, uh, 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 first person shooter. First person shooter. Popular game by a franchise known for making an RPG. One of the most popular games in existence from one of the most marketable franchises in existence. It's dominated by content that has large audiences. So yes, you would probably see a predominance of people on the platform that are that more than likely is going to be male dominated. What do men like to watch? They like to watch video games. What other things do men like to watch? They like to watch content. They like to see people talk. They like to have uh, content in front of them that they can just turn on and leave there, and, you know, just enjoy the view and enjoy the show. What's probably going to be on the mind of most of these people if they're looking at games like Team Fight Tactics and World of Warcraft and Fortnite and League of Legends and Hearthstone or even Dota or even Counter-Strike or even COD? Probably going to be young. Demographic-wise, just because I know the numbers, it's going to be from 9 to 17. At the most, in most splits, it's like 10 to 13, but let's be fair and make it larger. Let's say from the period that they will know that they like girls. So let's say like 11. Upwards, past, and let's say, let's go to like 21, 30, 24, 27. So like, tween, adult male. What else do you think you're gonna watch? Video games? Porn. Softcore or otherwise. Or models. I'm just saying. This is being real. Yeah. Well, this social media presence, listen. Look at this. I mean, gaming's been male dominated pretty much since its conception. There's nothing wrong with women and etc. in playing them. The problem is the gaming journals, SJWs, and people like Zombie. Yes, yes, yes. And kinda. Yes to people like Zombie. Yes to gaming journals. Not explicitly social justice warriors, because it's not explicitly an SJW thing. It's it, it's it's a community thing. It's a culture thing. Because for the longest time, video game, video gaming, gaming culture, and the subculture created about it exists in this weird dynamic flow system of like a giant food web where people who like video games overlaps with people who like content like manga and anime. And overlaps with other things, like people who enjoy art and fashion and style, you know? It's that interplay between people who go to conventions, people who play video games, people who play only video games and hang out with a small circle of people who share this hobby, and then that hobby going mainstream, which is where everything goes bad. And as the hobby goes mainstream and as the zeitgeist decides, you know what, actually, I think I'm a nerd today because I want to get in the cycle. <laughs> when the mainstream gets in on it, on it and all the normies attack the hobby, the hobby becomes corrupted because you have people who have never been into it who decide to get into it for the wrong reasons, like for clout or for money or to make money off of it and generally take advantage of it because they know that if they market themselves well enough, if they, make, if they market an idea about it well enough, they can take advantage of that and they can use that to their advantage and they can cycle that into future success down the line. 
because if you get in early and you can establish yourself, it, it gives you that authority angle. And this has happened with someone like Felicia Day. Felicia Day, the actress, big Dungeons and Dragons player, made content, made a comedy series, The Guild, founded the channel Geek and Sundry. She, one of the best examples I could give about what that looks like. Because if you were to just look her up and listen to what she has to say, you would never know how much of a raging, insert the word here, she is. On one hand, hey guys, let's, let's donate to this charity in, on behalf of, at my time, my then unborn daughter. Put forth money to make good change in the world. Upvoting positivity amongst all of her celebrity friends, playing celebrity D&D &D regularly on the critical role with Matthew Mercer and GM Satine as uh, GMs for it before they broke away and they did their own thing. Making content with Will Wheaton over tabletop. Interacting with celebrity friends. On the other hand, ranting all day, every day about politics and shaming people for not voting the way that she does on Twitter. Hand in hand. My alarm. Hand in hand. That's, that's where that comes from. And that's perfect to be seen because how many times have we seen articles from places like Roll20? Those guys that got banned from the website because two women wanted to join their group and they said, um, well, no, I'm sorry, but we just don't want to play with you guys. But I'm sure there will be another group that can find you. That's how it happens. Look at the comic book industry right now. Look at how the comic book industry is dying a slow critique death and how a person like even Ethan Van Skyver, a guy who's a 20-year veteran in the comic book industry, goes on to Twitter and actively grows into an anti SJW overnight. Because it originally started from, well, here's me trying to make a brand. Here's me trying to make a movement and an identity out of this group of people who's like, hey, I don't like the fact that I went on the internet and Moose Bauman, a person who draws and is on a comic book that is there, is harassing someone for some, no fucking reason because... He didn't get a business opportunity with Ethan Van Skyver. You know, that shit happened to me too. A lot that shit happened to a lot of people. A lot of comic bros did that. Lambasting him and attacking him and targeting him all day, every day, nonstop, for no other reason than because they had a vested interest to do it. It's what's happening right now with anime, with Kick Vic, and everything there. Same behavior. And that's even worse because that was already there in the community because that's an industry problem. That's not a fan problem. That's the people who make the content. That's the people who develop the ideas and control who gets jobs. It's, it's endemic. It stems from somewhere. And it is corruption from without and within. It never ends. Because in order to understand how it starts, you have to ask yourself, well, what came first? Was it the chicken or the egg? Was the toxicity and the violence and the harassment and the blah, 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 was that already there? Or was it that something happened and someone decided to recontextualize something else and say, oh, no, the, they weren't upset because they had something to be mad about. They were just mad because they wanted to attack us. That's how that corruption started. And I know because I was there to see it from my own eyes. That's fair, and I should have said normies, because what you're saying is true about normies coming into a hobby and ruining from people who are already there in community. Absolutely, fucking lootly. Look at anime right now. Absolutely disgusting. Straight up. You want to switch, be a cute white girl. <laughs> My girl senpai had to fight to get that uh, partnership. She had to fight for months. Girl is at Evo commentating, and Twitch was still like, we don't think you're ready to be a Twitch partner. Try again in like a few weeks. All right, let's watch the preview, because I'm not paying for this course. Help me, Natalie. Teach me, girl. All right, Natalie, I'm ready to learn. Teach me how to be a positive influence. Hi, I'm Natalie Casanova, also known as Zombie Uniform, and I make professional streamer, host, and voice actor. Like I said before, she continuously keeps reminding you she did some voice acting work. I'm fucking hungry. The only thing that's less me too, Gundam. Me too. You may have seen me on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Zombie Uniform with no E and Zombie. 
Plug. Let's go to Zombie Unicorns YouTube. Now let's finish this first. Let's let's, let's try and be. Oh my God, she brought up the reality show nobody remembers. Really, girl? Come now. Jesus Christ, you just get, that's her whole resume, essentially. I'm a professional streamer and content creator, among many other things. And you just told us everything you did. I think that, like, everything she's talked about here is the same thing she said when she was on the reality TV show. It's like the extra hat got added after the TV show. How come we don't bring up bully hunters, hmm? Exactly. I'm here today going to tell you about all how to do this whole thing, this whole content creation thing, online, whether it's streaming, video production, social media. We're going to talk about how to create content, how to up your quality of your production. Honestly, she is not the barometer for doing these things. Like, for real. Really. Streaming. The only thing she... Hard to agree. Very hard to agree. Really does is streaming. Video production, if someone isn't editing it for her, I don't I don't see any uh, amazing stuff coming. Her social media is basically where she plays the victim card all the time. If you've ever been on her Twitter, that's all the girl does. Like, she'll do something wacky, people will call her out, she'll run and scream, Oh, misogynist incels! Content creation. Oh, oh no, oh, it's worse than that, Gundam. Hmm. Here's why I brought the seats. Alright, so. Here. Is where. She. Attacked me with that tweet that she made, right? Here is one of those interactions where when I made no suggestion at all that what I was saying was being predicated on being sexist or sheltered or ignorant or even egotistical. Personal attack against me. Declaring this argument is moot. Same person. Attacking females and insulting their bodies after the context of the argument had been revealed as, oh, he wasn't being sexist. He wasn't being bigoted. He was just saying, I don't think you're a standard for telling people what to do. Attacks people about their body image and their face. Attacks people and shames them about things that they cannot change without money while saying, hey, you need to be a positive content creator and you need to have the right mental to do it. Here, having a person who says, it's sad that a bunch of trolls and haters push a false narrative about me shaming dancers when she did nothing of the sort, calling out a company for not following E3's guidelines of the type of advertising specifically at E3 because it made an uncomfortable atmosphere. Let's look at that atmosphere. What actually happened? Because I can show you. That's not the words. It should be video. This I have it here in the thread. Apologies, people. Where is it? It's probably in this one. Yes, right, sorry, in this it's right here in this one. So she says that the bang dancers were violating their contracts on what was supposed to be acceptable at Twitch. Here's what the girls were actually doing. Right, so, what I'm showing you, because this is probably going to get demonetized, not fucking flagged, or taken off the channel, what you're looking at is footage from E3 of the Bang Stage promotion booth. You see X amount of number of girls on stage. 
they are not sexualized in any particular way or any manner outside of, you could say, girls who are fit, who are in leotards. Athletic leotards. Dancing gear. Sneakers. Shoes. And the entire leotard itself being a Bang Energy Drink sponsor piece. Multiple guys who are both bouncers and promoters, uh, with the girls themselves also acting as promotional uh, models. Normal thing to do in the industry when it comes to advertisement. On stage, doing basically uh, a showcase for viewer entertainment and for the spectacle of the event. It's, it's an eye-catcher. People are going to look, go, people are going to walk into the place. Ooh, let's go check this out. Let's go check this out. How do you get all these people's attention? You do a showcase. And that's what they did here. This, at no point in time, just the dancing itself. I want to click through it for you because I don't want to just waste your time going through all of it. Although you will want to see the entirety of it for yourself. You can find this on my, uh, you can find this in my tweet, so let me just link it to the chat in case people want to look at it later. But you can go through and you can look at the video yourself with your own eyes. And you can realize the thing that she claims here did not happen the way she said it happened. Because I have the proof from the dancer her, like herself telling her. It should be in here somewhere. It's probably in this one. Let's open up another tab, I guess. Backtrack through the moment to find it. Where is it? Should be right here, actually. Probably right in this one. No, it's not. It should be in the one where I had it with uh, Siren Cove's videos on it. Scrolling, 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 scrolling. Ah, right here. It's in here. Mm -hmm. I find that one. There we go. So, here, Grace Mary O'Connor. This is one of the uh, one of the promotional model girls who were there at the event, who responded to her immediately when she live tweeted that video that everybody famously knows of her going up to the booth because it should be in here somewhere because I remember the specific angle of it. this so from the angle in the video where she was complaining about them Natalie was somewhere over here 
on this side of the stage, looking at the event from wherever she had came from. I don't know how the event's layout was. I, I didn't I was not there. I was working that day. She videos the stage complaining about the girls dancing. And from the angle where she is, she did not actually go over to the booth itself or talk to any of the girls. So one of the dancers, Mary Grace O'Connor, calls her out on social media immediately when this happens and tells her what I told people when I wrote a thread about promotion models and how promotion models actually are supposed to work. And she explains everything that I just said and tried to horribly. She responds to her. And rather than just saying, you know what? You're right. I'm wrong. I apologize. I shouldn't have tried to speak for you. You were not a victim. You knew what you were doing because this is a businesswoman. Like, say what you want about Natalie. Say what you want about any of these girls. They're fucking smart. They're business people. They understand anything. They understand optics. But this situation, rather than say, you know what? I was wrong for what I said. Rather than take responsibility for this, go back to it. Right here, right? She says false narrative about me shaming dancers when she did nothing of the sort, claiming in front a company was not following the E3 guidelines. Right here, in this interaction, is the actual truth. Say that you watched it and came back and blasted you and said that the work wasn't hard, or she claims she didn't either, demanded more respect for you and hope for a future for where we could have booth babes without the grossy pervy viewers taking pictures of your asses and making people, everyone else around uncomfortable. Let's go to the footage. You guys see anything that I see? Because I don't see what the fuck she's talking about. Where are that though? Like, I don't see any people with over pimples watching the event, skeezing around a corner, taking long, full rage, wide lens panorama shots. What was she looking at? Let's continue. All right, let's play the game. Forget it. Let's play. Uh, here we go. We're on Zombie Unicorn's page. That's where I found this video, so I'm going to have to keep that children. All right, what we got? No, girl. <laughs> okay, Zombie Unicorn's YouTube page is dead. This is a post-mortem. I shouldn't talk shit because technically my YouTube channel is no better. But I'm a relatively unknown small streamer and YouTuber. Proportional-wise, for my videos, they have better metrics than hers for my audience size. This is fucking sad. 920, 1.4K, 1.6, 6.3, 6.8, 5.1, 2.2, 2K, 1.8, 14, 8. 3.3, 3, 14, 16, 12, 32, 5.K, 10, 38, 27, 5.1. These are horrible. For someone who has 211,000 subscribers, there is no reason. There is no reason. Not even for somebody who markets themselves the way that she does on social media to have such low numbers like that. That is bad engagement. Welcome to the obituary. One week ago, she put up a video. 21 seconds. It will make a fine addition to your collection. 900 views. Nobody cares. Happy few creative paint body art. So body painting. 1,400 views two weeks ago. Is this literally like basically where she... Yeah, her YouTube channel is progressed into just putting up Twitch clips. That's it. This is your content. This is the same thing DSP does. It's called lazy. 
you know, if you don't mind me saying. If you have 200k subscribers and you're struggling to get a thousand views, you're in DSP territory here. She just got, she's got more views with DSP. I need to be more fair. Technically, DSP would kill for this number of views. Speaking of DSP, let's go there. Perfect point. Hello, everyone. It's Dark Side Phil here. Here we go. Another dead champ. 200k. 14 hours ago. 300 views. 15 hours ago. 300 views. 19 hours ago. 400 views. Jesus Christ, this dude just spams it. He's literally, he's killing his channel. YouTube doesn't make me any money. No shit, Phil. Look what you do. Look what you do, Phil. Look at this. Someone has to navigate this trash. Mm. He, he at least has playlists. I'm sure he's smart enough to do that. There you go. At least it's playlist, but it's just so discombobulated. It is a hot mess. This is like, this is lazy content. Everything you see here is what he streamed and then just uploaded to YouTube. There you go. The guy is busting his ass. As his words, not mine. It's a massive difference. <sighs> I'll give it to Zombie Unicorn. Mm. Well, I'm thinking about it. Just because Turnabout is fair play, I'm going to put myself on the spot. I'm going to roast myself. Right? I can view this later. Because I don't want to just talk shit. Because it's going to come up. I keep mentioning that. But it's going to come up. Come on, YouTube. Let me, let me let me open up my saves. There you go. No, but come on. Watch later. Right. So I'm gonna put myself on the spot. All right. Just to go back real quick. So let's look at her numbers. Right. Let's look at the numbers on her videos. Per her channel size. All right. Let's look at her, let's look at me. Not exactly a fair comparison. You should not compare when you can't compete. But let's look at the content, shall we? Very different. Why is there a video playing in the background? Okay, let's take care of that. All right, let's look at the videos and look at the difference. I have. 1.37 or 1.73 she has 211k proportionally speaking considering the content and considering the effort that i put into content just so far and not just what i have cooking up right now the view count not that bad it's not that bad it can use work it's not the best rough around the edges but it is not bad because everybody has to start somewhere right this is gonna come up too keep a pen in it right and this is just the most recent stuff this is recent to about like a week ago this should be higher this should not be 1.6 proportionally speaking if these videos had 1.6 just amongst the people who is being shared about, massively successful in terms of what I'm doing, right? For her to have these numbers is a failure because for me to have these numbers on mine would be seen as a success because that's just how, that's just how audience size works. Mm -hmm. There is no fucking reason, no fucking reason, because you can even see it on the comparisons of shit right here. Go to things like... Hater blood, body paint, recap from last October. 16k views. Compared against one of her higher things, which was the Go Exceller mixer for Helicon Gaming in her first impressions boxing video. 32 to 16k. Or it'll make a fine addition to your collection. Or all of the other Twitch highlights for her body painting and shit. From her highest ones. Is just repost and repost, right? Look across here. Here's videos of long varying length, right? You've got some videos that are short and sweet because they're meme based. Because it's based on things that are not involving 
something that is just from the stream. It's something that I had to make. I edited it. I put it together because it was there to make a point. Hose Mad is it a perfect example of it. Black Pool of Creativity is another perfect example of it. Chameleon Quinn's Crocodile Tears, another perfect example of it. We're both part news information and some archive footage. Because that's how I usually do my videos. It's how I start doing things. Between something like Clashing of Swords and Shields, documenting the whole shit show that is the technical failures behind it, something a, part, a bit more personal that most people wouldn't look at it, like the video where I'm explaining reasons why I make something like this, or specifically this video, then leading to something explaining something here in something in the channel updates or something, or cesspool of current year creativity, or the black pill of creativity. Go back through everything, and you look at the numbers, and you look at the points that it's supposed to make, the relevance they have to what they're being talked about, I'm at least doing something consistently, pointing out shit on a point, coming up with reasons why it's important and why it's not. Say what you, say what you want to, make the jokes, but there's something being done there. We can, we can go, on, the only place we can go is from up. Because if this is what I'm doing with an 11 year old laptop, what the fuck is your excuse? Like realistically speaking, like we get, let's go back to the comment, right? Let's go back up to the comment, right? Especially when a person that says this, when she said this shit. And then saying moving on from it. If this is how she speaks. And... This is the kind of shit that she says. Specifically to try to hurt someone. But... The person, based on when exactly did it start, right here, four months ago. If four months ago, I can put out a video of an hour and 17 minutes, 45 seconds explaining the point that I have, and then I do a follow-up where I wrote this thread from it with what I was able to find. Your HP is like four years old and has more problems than mine. Yeah, yeah, this... This HP is a little bit out there. The CPU and the, the chips inside of it, some are good, some are not. A lot of the games that I can't play, I can't play because of the, 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 the CPU that I have. It's not grand. Video card and whatnot. But, um, losing my train of thought. If I can go four months ago from when this shit happened, between two videos... And I can continue on and continue talking about other topics that does not involve her. And she's still doing shit like this. She's still trying to say, but oh, but the haters? What does that tell you? Like, again, what's your excuse? Come on. What's holding you back? Because I know what's holding me back. Time. Money. And ideas. You got time. You got money. You got free time to talk and complain and bitch and mind and moan. What's the problem? What's holding you back? Another pair of tits? Because I know for a fact it is. It's, what it's, it's one of the things that they talked about. Regularly. People like Nicole saw making whole ass videos where she's complaining that people are giving Casey Tron money. Because they're giving her more subs than she's getting. And she's trying to argue the reasons why they should sub to her and not her. I know how it goes. But going on a tangent. Let's get back on track. I'm a unicorn. At least like she does sit and stream. But God, 12 hours for this.
I'm done. I'm done, dude. I'm pull the ripcord, Johnny. <laughs> We're done with that video. And see everything, everybody, everybody's body. When you have to put Twitch chat in subscriber only mode, uh, what? Too many people trolled her. Pennywise dance Twitch highlight. Nope, because I'm 100% sure it's body paint, and I will get demonetized. That's your content. Whenever the views are low, the body paint comes out. Speaking of which, now I'm all over the place. This is so wrong. Question on how to deal with the challenges you're going to face and many more things. So, let's get into it. I've been streaming a little over five years and making videos on YouTube for almost just as long. And so this video is old. I started by playing a game called Smite. And it's no. So you started by joining other people's Smite streams with people like Smitten and flirting with the guys that were playing the game back then because then and she's going to explain it here in this clip she's going to explain that she was playing with other people off stream and they invited her to play on stream with them and someone at the company recognized her said "Ooh, ooh, i have an idea and the person who did it was Brandon Nance. If you don't know anything about Brandon Nance, just look up DM Brandon on YouTube. Specifically, go to The Other Frost and look up all of his videos about the problem with DM Brandon. Because he's going to talk about it. Because it regularly comes up. Because he was one of those people back then that was talking about it. Because he was there for this. People like Brandon, before he became the kind of bastard he is now. Allied. God rest his soul. Uh, Chapo, the other Frost, uh, most, if not all, of the Juice DM team, including Salem, um, Polar by Michael should be up there, Dust, r, &R uh, Moji, Fats, Fats, who is now a Twitch admin, actually, all of these people. Including uh, people like Jeff Henla and uh, Barracuda. All the SBL players back then. And all the content creators back then. Because I used to make content back then. It wasn't very good content, but I made content. Because it's on my second channel. The channel which I don't use right now. Because I have it there just for reasons. I used to play that game. A lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. Very, very good at playing solo lane. But, um... Played against Pro Jared. Beat him. Uh, a whole bunch of other shit. You know? Rel relative of shit that went around. When she first got into the game, they noticed her, brought her in. That's, that's the point I'm trying to get to. Basically, Zombie Unicorn was thinner there. I'm not trying to be an asshole, I'm just saying. She was cuter then. Point being, Zombie Unicorn is letting you know that people received her well, because she was a cute chick. Wow, people receive attractive women well on Twitch. What a revelation. From there, I actually had hurt my ankle, and I couldn't walk for like seven months. Mm -hmm. so it was a lot mm -hmm. of sitting down, yeah. playing video games. Okay. I was working at my college on my uh, college newspaper. Yeah. A lot of sitting down at the computer. So uh -huh. I would stream and play games like 12 hours a day, mm -hmm. and... It ended up getting me noticed by, I got noticed by High Res Studios. If you've got any level of uh, common sense, you just now listen to her story about how she got started. She was a cute chick that got noticed by some developers. Not everybody gets this lucky, so basically we're starting off with luck here. A lot of people aren't lucky. Uh, started doing YouTube then, and made different kinds of content, more comedy based, less serious. And from there, I just really kind of blossomed into this kind of person who made all kinds of content. So, not just your gaming stuff i would make like machinimas on you okay machinimas that's my god the dying brand i forgot machinima even existed okay let's look at the comedy content we got here will you kiss me no don't don't hug my lip at Riley. i will kiss you 
How the hell is this considered comedy? There goes the comedy for you. The dog is the whole thing. If the dog wasn't here, I assure you there'd be no comedy. The dog is gorgeous. I love that dog. What a funny dog. Does the dog have a YouTube channel for me to follow? True. And that developed me to, you know, more voice acting. Oh, my God. Became a passion of mine. I knew she was going to go into the voice acting field. By this account, everybody who's ever played a video game and did some voice acting is a voice actor. Jesus Christ. Dude, I don't even write voice actor on my pro bios and shit. Jesus, girl. We get it. You did some voice acting. And I never really knew that. And a lot of people who like to stream and do games also have that passion. Or hosting. Some of the things I've done have been hosting, interviewing game developers at conventions. And those things kind of help me meet more game developers, more publishers, marketers. Uh I don't know what she's hosted. The last thing I remember... Neither do I. Her hosting was Bully Hunters. Got my name out there a little bit more. And from there, it's just been a lot of streaming, YouTube... Um, eventually got on auditions for a TV show, went on the TV show, won the TV show, um, and then now I'm still doing more voice acting. Here, do you notice how it's like a broken record of the same sh we just established at the beginning of this Udemy? It hasn't even been a full three minutes and she's just gone over with the sh she's done again. More hosting, live hosting at events, uh, and it all really started from just sitting around playing 12 hours a day of Smite, and uh, it's crazy. It's been a wild ride. Big? Nah. It was 12 hours a day of getting carried. She was getting carried by other players. Because I had played against her multiple times. I didn't even know it was her at the time. But I played against her multiple times. Could not hit a Ymir stun if you put it in front of her. But the consistency of basically what she's saying is... Is that she got lucky. Because she was able to get it in based on the amount of time that she spent just spamming the platform. Which is probably part of the reason why those numbers that she has are so goddamn low. Because, like, there's no way. There's no possible way. She's describing what streaming was like in 2014, 15, 16. Metrics and techniques that don't work anymore because that's just not what streaming is now. Because you can't stream a game for... 12 hours. I sat down and I had this conversation with myself. It's part of why I made the, the black pill video. You just, there's no way that I can just spam hours and hours of content on my days where I do work, on days where I don't work, and expect that shit to work. It just doesn't, because it makes it have to become a, a marathon chore. And you'll burn yourself out like that. You gotta, you gotta figure out how to do other things, and that's an important part of it. It's not. It's no. It's it's no shade, you know. It's no explicit shade to say it, even though I have vested interest to throw shade. It, there's no way that it works like that. And Devin explained this that you have to do multiple things. You got to juggle multiple hats. You got to make content for YouTube. You got to make consistent streaming schedules. You have to stream at a time that is advantageous to your growth. You need to target what kind of games and what kind of streamer, what kind of content you want to bring to that, and then create supplemental content on top of it. It's what Scar did. When Team Fight Tactics came out, he partnered with Twitch and with uh, Riot to make graphics. Some of the best graphics necessary for the reference charts and details and informations, techniques, strategies, builds, build orders, characters, uh, rating of characters. He did all that. What you would normally expect from a normal YouTuber that's in the field of the subject making content on the character or making content about the game to explain the reason how you do what you do. I'd expect the same thing from someone like Lethen. I'd expect the same thing from something like Zizarin. I'd expect it from Dr. Disrespect. I'd expect it from someone who's interested on that side of giving information and knowledge. Even for something that is as niche-based as, say, Darkest Dungeon, or something that is even more elaborate, but also inside of a specific kind of niche, like Don't Starve Together, or Don't Starve in general. Especially if it's on something like uh, streaming as a whole. Especially Devin Nash, because his industry stream is fucking banging. Every single time he streams, I watch it. Because every single bit of what he says is relevant information, not just to help you grow, but it's just entertaining like, I didn't fucking know that. And so, 
it brings you back to come do it because that's how it's supposed to monetize. Make something that people need. Give them a reason to have the watch. Bring them more content that keeps them engaged in that thing that they're enjoying, that they're using, that they're watching. You know, blase, blase, whatever the hell it is. Doesn't matter if it's industry news, doesn't matter if it's tactics or tips on how to be a better streamer or how to be a better player, how to be a better player in a specific game like League of Legends or Smite, whatever or otherwise. Other Frost did perfect examples of this, especially right hot off the shit that happened between him and Brandon Nance, where he points out the reasons why he has personal problems with him. He explains it for everyone to see, whether he be joking or not explains it, shows it, and then to exacerbate his point in the most cinema sin sinning style possible of what we'd expect from somebody like JXC or from Mahler or from the Birdman, making content where you point out the reason why you disagree with something, critiquing it and showing instead of doing that, here's how you do this. That content is what creates the cycle of the current kind of streamer. What she's mentioning here with Spending 12 hours a day, 12 hour stream sessions for non-special events, like things that are for anniversaries or something that's like a planned stream for content that you want to make for a challenge. Like you're playing League of Legends and you're trying to do a 30 challenger series playing in a specific role or being a, a one trick pony that's playing the game. Shit like that. That's... That, that the, what she's referring to is like the old system. And it explains a lot when you go moving forward because you're like, oh, that's why that's like that. That's why that, clout, that's why that clout seeking happens. That's why that clout chasing happens. It's unfortunate because you wish that it wasn't, but it is what it is. Basically, she got lucky. That's all this is telling you. She got lucky and then got a little bit of a following. But if you look at her metrics now, she isn't very popular. You know, this, this is not the person you want to pay $100 for a course to. Unless you want something to laugh at. Lily Casanova, also known as Zombie Unicorn, and I am a pro So our first lesson will be developing your brand and your stream personality. <laughs> first thing that I need to say is, if you're going to start streaming or creating content, you should never plan and expect it to become a full-time career. It happens for some people. It doesn't happen for everybody. It takes hard work. It takes the right circumstances, and sometimes it takes good luck. But... It takes a lot of luck to get that far. It takes a lot of luck. Be a cute chick. Look at Twitch right now. Look at how it's like flooded to the point of where Twitch is kind of becoming saturated with Twitch dots to where it's actually competition for them to outdo each other. It's funny. True. It takes the right circumstances and sometimes it takes good luck. But you should always keep in mind, even if you're doing this just for fun. Gotta love the pot plant earring, which means Zombie Unicorn has to live in L.A. Become a career and so you're going to want to make a name that's brand safe. You're going to want to make a name that's easy to say, easy to remember, um, easy to spell. Uh, not a great example. <laughs> With the zombie unicorn without the E, that's something that's always kind of plagued me. But uh, Honest to God, I'd never noticed her name was without the E. Didn't care. I don't think most people notice. Excuse is that I am Latina, so it's a Spanish spelling. That's how I get away with it. But some people come oh, up boy. with these names that are long phrases, um, and they sound funny and they're great, but it's hard to put on a t-shirt or it's hard to make a Twitter handle for. So that's something you need to keep in mind. Something you need to keep in mind when you're creating your, your brand, your name. Your so basically, she starts off by telling you, don't do this, thinking you could turn it into a career. Then she turns... It's worse than that. She starts out by saying, Here's what, here's who I am. Here's all of these successes I had. Here's how I waylaid something that was supposed to be, hey, um, just playing with friends, and waylaid into a career... And then tell you, don't do this unless you have these things. Because that's what a person's going to discern from it. Because all you're telling them is, I got super lucky. I knew the right kinds of people. It was the right kind of time. All these things were helpful for me. What do you do with that? Who does that help? How does that help the girls who you're targeting that for? Because that's not helping them. That doesn't teach them how to fucking work. Like... They should be motivated. They should be more motivated than even their most favorite and their most dedicated follower. They should be more dedicated to their own vision than the most dedicated subscriber, the most loyal VIP that has been in the community for the longest of time. They should be just spending that time 
working with them to get there to have that feel because it will then bring the people in like that's the first thing that i would probably tell somebody if i was to give them advice on when on how to start streaming is what's what i did with my friend ian when we worked on his the first thing you got to do is just understand you got to have a personality maybe tone figure out about what yourself what you what, what you think would mildly terribly turn people off from you you know it, it, for me it'd probably be staying the fuck up to ask and not talking to that too much but it would also be understanding how to have a balance between giving my real opinions and learning how to sugarcoat information just well enough to get a point across it, shit like that telling them about your successes and how that success was based on luck is just going to make them anxious. It's going to make them look and say, well, I don't have all that good luck, and here I am starting from the rock bottom, so I guess i got to cut a few corners. That's how the Twitch thoughts get made. They look at all the shit that they could do, and they say, well, that's too hard. What could I do that takes less effort? A brand safe name. Well, if the, the, well, the chances are slim, why do I need a brand safe name? You mean, you mean I can't be Captain Cuck? <laughs> Zombie. It's a good name channel name, your personality, uh, some people want to, some people want to come up with a personality that is something that is not themselves. You have characters like Dr. Disrespect, you've got something that took years of work, as he has multiple videos where he's just playing around the concept. Benny Fitz, he's a Muppet. Completely same situation. You have, uh, there's a dog, there's a safe rig dog character, there is, um, is she talking to I don't think she knows about rags. There's so many other examples out there. There's somebody who acts like a pirate. There's someone who acts like this. There's That's more or less what Ian was doing. There's Future Man. Uh, there's all these characters. So you need to decide, do you want to do this crazy character? I zoned out so hard. I zoned out so hard from this day. Um, Cliff Notes, if you want to be a like Dr. Disrespect, come up with a character. If not, then don't. Hope that helps. Imagine if Bob Ross just explained to you painting rather than painting. That's pretty much what this Udemy course is. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. It's not funny. As Billy Crystal would say, it's not fun. It's not funny. I, I can't take this. Jesus Christ. What a waste of my life. Oh, God. And there's still so much more cancer I'm supposed to look at today, and I just ain't got it in me. This was supposed to be the short video. <laughs> well, well, that's definitely the video. But yeah, more or less, I agree with some things, but most of these things I don't, because at the end of the day, the point of it is just, the more you watch it, the more clear it comes, it's just, eh, it leaves bad taste in your mouth. But... And it's probably going to come up. It's probably going to be a thing that happens sooner rather than later. I'm going to cut this for YouTube with highlight. Have it uploaded later. Put it up. Probably retweet it. It's going to come up, but the whole point of the gist of this is the shit that you're being told. What you're seeing and what actually happens, the reality... They, 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 ain't, they, don't, they don't match up. They're not there. The truth of what you can get from this, if you, see, if you see anything, is that take the shit with not just grains of salt, but massive patches of salt crystals. Go into it. Understand that some shit is going to happen. What you witness may not be what you receive. And ultimately, just open your mind and realize that if you're in a situation that you find yourself in, if you are like me, and you find yourself in a situation with a person like this, write down everything, get your receipts, put them out there, and just weigh into the face. Just dive right in. That's the best advice I could give you. I'll give you better advice than her. If you're going to be a streamer, and you're going to be dealing with the trials and tribulations of the job and what it comes with. Both feet right in. Jump into it. Lean in. Lean forward. If you do that, you will never fail. 
Because if you don't lean in, if you don't learn to chop and learn to chop back, you're always going to be a victim. You're never going to be able to move forward. You're never going to be able to do anything at all. Because every situation is going to be, oh, oh, oh. You're always going to be reacting to something and coming up with reasons to explain away your own behavior. Got all up to something. I ain't perfect. Never said I was. Never will be. But I know who I am. I'm not that. Right. I'll be back in like a couple minutes. And we really get started. Mwah. Good night, everybody.